In this video, you're going to learn about the change and focus of the CentOS project from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream. More importantly, you're going to learn what that means for you and any actions you might want to take as a result of this change. So if you use CentOS in any capacity, be it professionally, for educational purposes, or just for fun, you'll want to watch this video to the very end. Let's start with the official announcement directly from the CentOS team on December 8th, 2020. It reads, The future of the CentOS project is CentOS Stream, and over the next year we'll be shifting focus from CentOS Linux, the rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, to CentOS Stream, which tracks just ahead of a current RHEL release. CentOS Linux 8, as a rebuild of RHEL 8, will end at the end of 2021. CentOS Stream continues after that date, serving as the upstream development branch of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. In order to fully understand this statement, we first need to know exactly what Red Hat Enterprise Linux is, what CentOS Linux is, and what CentOS Stream is. By the way, I know there are many very strong emotions around this announcement, and I'll address those in just a minute. But first, please be patient with me here as I explain just a little of the relevant history around this announcement. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL for short, is a Linux distribution developed by Red Hat Incorporated for the commercial market. The primary means by which Red Hat Incorporated generates revenue is by selling subscriptions or support services to Red Hat Enterprise Linux and their other open source software products. At the time of this recording, the publicly available prices that Red Hat charges for support per RHEL server installation starts at $349 US and goes up to $2,847. Those prices are per server per year. As an individual, that might sound like a good amount of money, but when you consider that there are companies that would lose tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars per hour of downtime, then those subscription fees start to pale in comparison. Having a company like Red Hat provide support not only for the distro itself, but also support interoperability with your other enterprise infrastructure is well worth it. It's almost like having an inexpensive insurance policy. For example, I remember working with Red Hat on an issue a few years ago. A RHEL server that I supported experienced a kernel panic. The server logs indicated an issue with the driver for the HBAs, or host bus adapters. That server was connected to our storage area network via a pair of HBAs. From what I could tell, the server and the SAN were both configured properly, so I contacted Red Hat support. They were able to quickly identify the issue and provide me with a custom patched kernel to use on that system. That patch would, of course, make its way into the kernel and eventually become part of RHEL via an update. If I were using a community-supported distribution such as Debian, I would have asked for help via a public forum, an email list, or a chat room, and hope one of the community volunteers with the proper skills in this specific area would take the time to look at my issue. Now, those volunteers are amazing people who are not getting paid. I mean, they are truly saints. Because they're not getting paid, they get to pick and choose which issues they'll spend time on, what's important to them, and so on. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I would have no right to demand their time or attention. However, my company was paying Red Hat for support, which they provided per our contract with them. We paid them to make our issues important and now. That kind of attention, support, and service makes it worth the subscription fee when you rely on Linux to sustain your business. But what if you, as an individual, want to learn RHEL because you want to work as a Linux system administrator at one of those companies that pay Red Hat for support? Or what if you want a proven distro with rock-solid performance for a project that will never generate any revenue or income whatsoever? Traditionally, in those cases, you would use CentOS Linux. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is built from open source components. The Linux kernel and the supporting software are all open source. This means that Red Hat has to make its source code publicly available, and that source code can then be repurposed into other software. In 2004, Greg Kurtzer took the Red Hat source code and removed all of Red Hat's trademarked components such as logos, branding, and artwork. 
He then compiled that source code into a distribution. That distribution eventually became known as CentOS, the Community Enterprise Operating System. Now, anyone could essentially run RHEL without paying for a subscription. People have even labeled CentOS Linux as being bug for bug compatible with RHEL. In 2014, Red Hat essentially acquired the CentOS project. Red Hat called itself a sponsor for the CentOS project, while CentOS announced that it had joined the Red Hat family. Several members of the CentOS team became employees in Red Hat's open source and standards team. Also, Red Hat took ownership of the CentOS trademarks and required that the CentOS board be made up of a majority of Red Hat employees. It was clear that Red Hat wanted to exert influence over CentOS, and some people in the open source community saw this as the beginning of the end for CentOS. Red Hat itself was acquired in 2019 by IBM. This again had people speculating about the future of the CentOS project. Okay, so that's enough history of the CentOS project and CentOS Linux. So what is CentOS Stream? Well, I'll just read the description from the CentOS site. CentOS Stream is a quote, continuously delivered distro that tracks just ahead of Red Hat Enterprise Linux development positioned as a midstream between Fedora Linux and RHEL, unquote. Some people call a continuously delivered distro a rolling release distro or a rolling distro. What this means is that the distro is constantly being updated. Instead of accumulating several bug fixes and enhancements and releasing them together as a point release, such as CentOS Linux 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, and so on, a rolling release immediately incorporates those individual bug fixes and enhancements as soon as they become available. If you're the type of person who installs CentOS and then runs a DNF update every so often without much worry or testing, then the difference between CentOS Linux and CentOS Stream is going to be practically unnoticeable to you. Let's quickly talk about Fedora since it was mentioned in the definition of CentOS and it plays a role in the development process as well. Fedora is a community-driven and community-supported distribution of RHEL. Thousands of developers who have no official connection to Red Hat Incorporated contribute to Fedora. Red Hat takes selected features from Fedora, puts those through its own testing and quality assurance processes, and eventually incorporates those features into RHEL. For example, prior to RHEL 8, you would use the yum command to install software. Starting with RHEL 8, that command was replaced with DNF. However, the DNF command first appeared in Fedora 18, which was released in 2013. Starting with Fedora 22, the yum command was replaced by DNF, and that was in 2015. RHEL 8 wasn't released until 2019. This is just one simple example of how divergent Fedora and RHEL can be. CentOS Stream is designed to stay much closer to RHEL. Instead of the workflow order being Fedora, Red Hat's internal process outside the view of the public, RHEL, and then CentOS Linux, it now becomes Fedora, CentOS Stream, and then RHEL. CentOS moves from being downstream of RHEL to being just upstream of RHEL. Essentially, CentOS Stream allows the world to see what's coming in the next version of RHEL and allows the CentOS community to provide input on the features and capabilities that will end up in RHEL. Despite all the claims that CentOS is dead, it simply is not. It is alive and well. It has simply shifted its place in the life cycle of RHEL. So if you're currently using CentOS Linux for your personal projects or using it to learn RHEL, then using CentOS Stream is still a great choice for you. Oh, and if you want to switch from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream, it only takes three commands to migrate your existing installation, so the process will be fairly painless for you. By the way, I teach Linux classes, and I've had some of my students tell me they felt like they just wasted their time learning CentOS 8 Linux. I assured them, and I want to assure anyone who has spent time using or learning CentOS that their time was not wasted. Everything you learn to do on CentOS can be done exactly the same way on RHEL. Likewise, if you switch to CentOS Stream, you'll take all of that knowledge and experience with you. And if you keep using CentOS Stream, you'll end up being slightly ahead of the people who only use RHEL. 
But what if you still need or want the bug for bug compatibility with RHEL? The good news is that you have some options. The first option is to join the Red Hat Developer Program for free and download RHEL directly from Red Hat. Before February 2021, you were only allowed to use RHEL for development purposes. That means you were not allowed to use it in production. Also, you could only install RHEL on one physical system and up to 16 virtual machines. However, starting in February of 2021, you can use your free Red Hat developer subscription to run RHEL in production for up to 16 systems at no cost. So if you're using CentOS Linux for a personal project or a small business that has 16 or fewer systems, you can switch to RHEL and not incur any subscription fees. Even though you're allowed to run RHEL in production, you can't call Red Hat for support without a paid subscription. Systems that fall under the Red Hat Developer Program are self-supported. Of course, Red Hat is going to make it really easy for you to upgrade your subscription to full support. But again, you don't have to if you only need 16 servers and don't require support beyond package updates in the distro itself. When CentOS 8 was first released, it was scheduled to be supported until the year 2029. For many people and businesses that already relied on CentOS 7, it was a no-brainer to use CentOS 8 for their new deployments as CentOS 7 support was, and still is, scheduled to end in 2024. Also, some people had migrated some or all of their CentOS 7 systems to CentOS 8, all the while expecting them to be supported until 2029. When CentOS changed their focus from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream and announced they were going to end support for CentOS 8 Linux at the end of 2021 in favor of CentOS 8 Stream, people were livid. The rules were changed on them midstream, and they felt betrayed. They lost trust in the CentOS project and had no respect for RHEL, who instigated this entire series of changes. Needless to say, these people aren't going to migrate to RHEL, even if it is free for them to do so. For those people, they want to try a new distro. Remember Greg Kurtzer? He was the person that essentially started CentOS. He's done it again and started another Linux distribution named Rocky Linux that is targeted at solving the same problem that CentOS was initially designed to solve. Rocky Linux is a clone of RHEL, again with all the logos, brandings, and artwork of RHEL being removed. At the time of this recording, the distro hasn't been released, and there is no estimated date on its initial release. However, there are high hopes for this project, and many people are waiting to see if Rocky Linux becomes the new CentOS. Alma Linux is an open source project that also intends to fill the gap left by CentOS Linux. Alma Linux is a binary compatible fork of RHEL 8. The plan for Alma Linux is to match every RHEL release. The project is backed by Cloud Linux, which is a for-profit company. At the time of this recording, Alma Linux has released its first public beta. It's important to note that Cloud Linux has currently earmarked funding to support Alma Linux. And since it's not yet fully released, it's hard to know if a community will grow around this distribution and be able to operate and support it independent of Cloud Linux. For example, what happens if it's no longer in Cloud Linux's interest to fund Alma Linux. Oracle Linux, like CentOS Linux, is compiled from Red Hat source code. Oracle Linux is, of course, distributed by the Oracle Corporation. Oracle makes money from their distro by selling support to it. However, if you just want to use the software, then that is 100% free. You might be asking, if I can get support for RHEL from Red Hat, why would I buy support for Oracle Linux from Oracle? Well, if you happen to use and already pay support for Oracle databases, it might make sense to use Oracle support for the entire stack, the database and the OS. According to Oracle's site, their support contracts are, quote, significantly cheaper than support from Red Hat, unquote. Plus, Oracle does add some additional features, such as their unbreakable enterprise kernel, which is tuned specifically for database workloads. However, you don't have to use that kernel and can use what they call the Red Hat Compatible Kernel, which is simply the kernel compiled from Red Hat source code. So if you use the Red Hat Compatible Kernel, you are simply running RHEL with Oracle branding. Oracle Linux is an option that is available today. However, some people are hesitant to switch to Oracle Linux because, again, Oracle is a for-profit company. 
they fear they might end up in the same situation with Oracle as they did with Red Hat. Before we bring this video to a close, let's quickly summarize what you have learned. CentOS 8 Linux as a rebuild of RHEL 8 will stop being updated at the end of 2021. Starting in 2022, the only supported version of CentOS will be CentOS Stream. CentOS Stream is now the upstream development branch of RHEL. New features and capabilities will be introduced in CentOS Stream first, and then later be incorporated into RHEL. For those who are comfortable with a rolling distro, switching to CentOS Stream will be the easiest migration path. For those who need 100% bit-for-bit compatibility with RHEL and do not want to pay a subscription fee, there are a few options. If you plan to have 16 or fewer installations for either production or non-production workloads, then you can use a free Red Hat developer subscription and run RHEL. Oracle Linux, which is a rebuild of RHEL, is also an option as it's free to use on an unlimited number of devices. Next, there is Alma Linux, which is currently sponsored by Cloud Linux Incorporated. Finally, Rocky Linux is a community-driven distro led by the founder of the original CentOS project. I sincerely hope this video cleared up some of the misconceptions around the changes to the CentOS project. I also hope it has given you enough information to make a decision on what changes you are going to make in light of the shift from CentOS Linux to CentOS Stream. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm sure you're going to enjoy my other Linux videos and courses. I'll leave a link to my website where you can get access to even more Linux content.